So, so, but did your, were your folks actually uh, divorced or you just, your dad just kind of like, he, he wasn't, he said he obviously wasn't around, but um, you know, and, and, and did this, like you said, it, it affected you, but like how else did it maybe impact you? And, and were there any like siblings or was it just the, you and your mom? Okay. So my mom was married. Um, she was, she was engaged to a, to a mining foreman, which in those days was still a very respectful job. And uh, he had an accident uh, in underground and he, he, he became paraplegic as a result. So my mom, being the sweetheart that she is, decided to go through with the marriage and she married him in hospital. Wow, and wow. Um, yeah, which is both very cool and also quite foolish if you want to enjoy you know, any of your life, to be honest. And so it's a, it was a massive sacrifice. So she, could, she couldn't have uh, children. <coughs> and, um, and so they adopted my brother Mark. Um, and 10 years later, after as you can imagine, a relatively boring life in, in all aspects. Uh, she, she really helped. She picked him up and did everything for him, created this big lawnmower company where she did all the lifting. And he was super wealthy. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> and um, after 10 years of really just sacrificing to this guy, who really didn't treat her well, and I met him, and I could say that he has passed on. God rest his soul. There's no dissing, but it, it, he wasn't, wasn't amazing to her. And so my mom, as most people do, quite naturally, you know, do drift and uh, she met my dad which was a no-brainer he's an absolute legend he was like a boxing champion and he was a proper, proper player and I could see how he would have swept my mom away and uh, my mom was a, a good-looking woman as well still at that time you know and so they had an affair in the marriage and I was the result of the affair and in those days if you did commit adultery or ha have an affair you get to you you are kicked out of the marriage with nothing so she she got nothing but she got the step she got the adopted brother Mark and um and he left and he left it no money whatsoever. And my dad being the bugger that he was, <coughs> also had multiple affairs going on, which my, which my mom wasn't happy with at all. And she would have no part of it. So she literally, I think a year or two of trying to make it work with my dad while I was around, she goes, she was over it and she made the call. She was like, that's it. I'm going to raise this child by myself. I don't know most, I don't know the exact details, but I, I know that he was probably there was a whole nother family that he was kind of with already mm. when he had, when he had um, been with my mother. So in hindsight, I think a fantastic call on my mom's part uh, to keep me away from it. And then what happened further down the line is after like one day, when I go back to Johannesburg kind of in, in Rand Park, end of Rand Park, that question went from who's that guy with, you know, playing ball with the younger kids. And I was just like, mom, who, who is that guy? My, my guy of those guys. <laughs> who's that tall guy? My guy. Is he even tall? Is he alive? And she was like, oh, yeah, here's his number. I was like, you, you up, you up, what, are you what? <laughs> <laughs> wow, dumbstruck, man. Yeah, she was yeah. like, here's his number. I was like, you're kidding me. I've been no telling way. people he's dead. <laughs> not, not, for, not for a long time. Though. I think this is literally a pre-primary, like, little memory that I have, you know. <laughs> I was like, what? He's got it. How can he have a number? He's in heaven. Um, Jeez. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just called him up. And uh, I was like 16, 17, I think, 17. I called him up and I said, hey, yep, dad, it's me, Art. And he was like, oh, oh. freaked out. <laughs> Pay phone. He's like, oh, I can't believe it. I was like, maybe we should meet. And he was like, yes, definitely we should meet. So that was in Joburg. And um, we said, okay, we're going to meet next weekend at the Hyperama entrance one and 10 o'clock. I was like, okay, Kev, that's it. That's, I mean, those days, that's how you had to make arrangements. And there were no calendar reminders with push notification. Um, <laughs> And so I went to the Hyperama, 10 o'clock. Mom couldn't deal with it. She went around the corner, went and did some shopping. And I was like, I just guess I'm looking for an old dude who's looking for a young dude. <laughs> he didn't tell me what it is. <laughs> it's actually quite scary in this day and age that that, that was a thing because anything else could have happened, right? Uh, and um, and shit, I was there at 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock. I was like, ah, oh, bugger. But again, I, there was, I had no anger in me. I, there was nothing. I wasn't, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's, I don't know if there's levels of, of, um, I don't know. I, I don't know what it was, but I didn't feel anything untowards. I was like, curse you, dad. You left me alone at the hyper market. Wow. My knees like, yeah, it's like, okay, give. So I went back, I went back and I dad, like, bro, what's up, bro? I was at the, I was at the entrance. And he was like, what do you, what do you mean? What you said entrance two. I was like, no, I said entrance one. He's like, ah, Oh, He'd been standing at the entrance, literally around the corner, as passionately as I had. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he was like, I promise you, I was, there. I was at this entrance. There was the thing. I was like, I know where that one is, but that's not where we said. Anyway, so Kev, I said, let's, <laughs> let's try again. 
So I said, why don't we, why don't we find it? Why don't we actually make a place like a, like a coffee shop or something? And he's like, brilliant idea, son. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's, great. that's a great idea. And uh, <clears throat> so it was the next one. Next time we met in Northgate and um, it was a little bit easier. There was just a lowly old guy sitting at one of the tables and I walked up to him, we both just stood up and just started sobbing uncontrollably. It was no just ways. the most beautiful, mm. natural, easy thing. And we just hugged and sobbed and hugged and sobbed some more and hugged and sobbed. And, and it was just beautiful. And um, so we, we started a connection from there. First of all, I milked, I milked quite a few of the missed birthday presents from him. I made him buy me a, a drum kit because <laughs> 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 I was studying drums, which he did gladly. And he was a legend. And then we got to hang out, hang out you know, subsequently and, and spoke a lot of just just about where he was at and where my mom was at and, 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 and in all of it, I was just like, yeah, that's, that's just how it is. That's what the situation was. It wasn't great. You were wrong. She was probably a bit wrong here and there. Who knows? Like talking about it really not going to, it's really not going to help us get to our next brandy and Coke. So why don't we, why don't we speak to the waiter? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so we had, so we had, a, you know, we had a bunch of cool time. I got to play golf with him. He's an, he's a, he's a, Absolutely incredible player from the bunker. I've, I've saw I've saw him hold like three or four bunker shots, which killed me because I've still never no done that in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we just had a cool, <clears throat> unashamed, proper love affair with each other. And then when I moved to the states, we used to we used to like look at each other in the eyes with tears and go, "Dad, you know I love you, right?" Because goes, nah, you know I love you. I'm like, no, uh -huh. Dad, I, I I I love you. And it didn't matter where we were, crowded airport, crowded family gathering, crowded anything. And the tears were just streaming both of us. Like, you know I love you. It's like, yes, of course I know I love you. And, I, and that was the last thing I said to him when I, when I found out that he passed away when I was in New York. So I had proper peace about all of it. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So there was just, there's nothing like, oh, I wish I had of, like, no, I, it was, we, we said, we forgave each other in an instant and we confessed <laughs> our love over and over again, something that most people who have been brought up with very caring fathers would die. Do you know what I mean? Like wondering if, wondering more about if, if they'd said mm -hmm. what, what, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yeah. bud. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. uh, such a, such a human, beautiful story, man. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, sure. At 17 though, that's like a real young, tender age really to, to but late. have this peace <laughs> of mind to be like, I'm going to go and do this and call him up. Were you, how were you feeling? Were you super nervous? Were you? Actually, I think what, what happened is, um, I remember Glenn Thompson and, and um, oh, was it Ian? Oh, these beautiful boys. That we, we, we were a little bit of a naughty crew. I think we bunked, we bunked school one day. Probably got stoned. I think we were trying to get into weed at that stage. I'm not too sure. Um, <clears throat> I really can't remember. So we may have been stoned or may have not been. And I remember uh, may have us <laughs> being on a mission. Glenn was like, that's it. We're walking now. We're going to go and find your father. I was like, okay. It was wow. Joburg. Like, but where, which way do you want to? Because we used to hitch everywhere. <laughs> and I was like, was a, you want to walk and you're going to look at, you don't know what he looks like. I don't nice. know what he looks like. But we're going to go and find, it was one of those missions. So <clears throat> it's likely that there was some green involved. <laughs> and then I, and I was like, I was like, hang on. I've got, I've got, a, I've got a clue. What if I ask my mom where he might be? And they were like, yes, that's genius. <laughs> so I was like, mom, where's dad? She's like, he has his number. I was like, oh. <laughs> no way. They've taken all the walking out of it. <laughs> no, oh, but... <laughs> so, 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 but I mean, it sounds like there wasn't mm. too, well, there was reconciliation, but there wasn't almost anything to sort out, like in terms of you and your dad. Was it all like that? And then what was your mom's kind of reaction to this new relationship forming? Uh, no, she was, she was supportive of it, but she wanted nothing to do because he was still with the family that he had on the side which caused her obviously immense pain <clears throat> do you know what i mean <clears throat> that's her stuff mm -hmm. so she was happy that i had the relationship but she wanted nothing to do with integrating anything like that so mm -hmm. she was she was very brave um to be part of as much of it as she did to be honest because there was a lot of there was a lot of trauma around around that her reasoning for for, for running away from me which i still haven't ever asked all the full details but i, I probably could mm. Just not. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold mountain range. Gotta be quick, so 